This video is made possible by Spencer Shipley at Packy Webb Ford in Downers Grove, Illinois. Spencer is dedicated to finding the right car for you in the quickest time possible. Give him a call or contact him with the information up on the screen or found in the description below. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Outer Banks. Up front is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline three and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Guys, I am so incredibly excited to be driving the new Bronco Sport for two main reasons. First of all, this is a very highly anticipated vehicle for 2021 and I'm so excited to be getting behind the wheel of this. They haven't even sold any of these yet. At the time of filming, this isn't even available to the public quite yet, but by the time it comes out, it probably will be. And that's just so exciting to me. The second reason is the fact that this is my first video with Packy Webb Ford. And so far, the customer experience at Packy Webb has been absolutely amazing. And I'm excited to hopefully bring more Ford content to you guys in the future. So <laughs> that's why I'm very, very excited to be driving this car today. Before we get on with the video, if you are looking to sell your car, click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com is looking to buy your car with a clean title, salvage title, running, non-running, whatever it is, get a quick and easy free quote with the link down in the description below. And once you agree upon the price, they will pick up your car in less than 24 hours. You don't even have to get off the couch. So let's get back to the 1.5 liter. I will put the power numbers up on the screen this isn't going to be a power torque monster you're not going to twist a frame with this engine however driving it around here i actually haven't really noticed any lack of power you might be thinking oh 1.5 liter turbo that's tiny i you know i drink soda bottles that are bigger than that engine yeah sure but the way technology is moving, it doesn't feel sluggish. I'm not driving this car and thinking, ugh, I wish it had a little bit more. However, you can actually get more. If you go up to the very top trim level, the Badlands, which is a more off-road oriented Bronco Sport, you actually get a two liter engine. A Little bit more power there. It is a two liter turbo, but if you want a different engine, you can get that if you'd like. I'll put the miles per gallon up on the screen. Nothing too crazy. Again, this is an SUV. However, it is helped out by that small engine. Once you get up to cruising speeds, you're really not using the turbo all that much. You're a very, very fuel efficient car. Let's put it into sport mode. Right, so that was just getting up to the speed limit in sport mode. It's not anything crazy. Like I said, it's an only a 1.5 liter, but I'm not sitting here thinking, ugh, I need that two liter. Ugh, I, I wish it came with a V6. Ugh, I'm not saying any of that. I'm actually thoroughly enjoying the power that was given to me. And I like that a lot. That That's very, very big in my book. Like I said, paired to it, eight speed automatic transmission. Nothing too crazy. I've been doing a lot of city driving here and the transmission has felt great. It, I don't really even notice it shifting. And, and that's the best thing an automatic transmission can be. The best thing an automatic transmission can feel like is absolutely nothing. You don't notice it. You shouldn't be thinking about it. And I really, really like that. Last but not least, the Bronco Sport is four wheel drive. And we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on so let's talk about the interior we have quite a bit to go through this is the outer banks trim level now the outer banks is sort of a mid to upper trim level and while i said the badlands is actually a higher trim level the badlands isn't nicer than this it's just more off-road oriented so the outer bank starts at thirty-two thousand dollars, which i think is honestly a really good price for what you get. So let's talk about what you do get. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. On the left is my tachometer and on the right is my speedometer. These are tactile actual gauges. And then I get a screen in the center. I really like this screen. I think it has great frames per second. I think it looks good. I think it operates well. And I'm showing on screen a couple different menus and options that you can look at in your center screen. Ford has always been pretty good at giving you a lot of information, especially if you drive any of their Mustang products. They give you like intake air temperature and, and, and things like that for the Mustang. I really, really like that. Very, very smart. And if you're going to have a gauge, might as well, you know, give me all you can. And Ford has done a pretty good job of that in the past as well as 
now. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control options, my volume options, as well as a mute button. I think this is really overlooked in cars. Not enough cars have a dedicated mute button, and I have that right on the wheel. I really, really like that. Then on the right, I have my selector for that center screen and the gauge cluster we just talked about. But lastly, I think the nicest and coolest thing about the steering wheel, two more things about the steering wheel. First of all, it is heated. We'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. But the second thing is that I actually have a new Bronco logo on the steering wheel, and I think it's super cool. Guys, I drive five to six brand new cars a week, and it's so cool to be driving a vehicle that has a new logo in front of me. I look down, and my brain doesn't automatically register it. It's, it's not something that I've seen a million times. It's really, really cool to look down and see a new logo. It's something so small, I know, I understand that, but to me, it's just so cool. To the left of me, I have my tailgate button. I do have automatic headlights, which is nice, and my gauge dimmer switch. And then on the door, I have my lock and unlock, power windows, power mirrors, and of course, child locks and things like that. Moving into the center, I do have a touchscreen display. Now, what you're seeing right now, this is a demonstrator vehicle, so there's a red line going from the bottom left to the upper right of the screen. This is because it's a demonstrator vehicle and this is a protective surface. So I will not be removing it for the video. However, just know that when you buy your Bronco Sport, it's not going to have this red line. This is Ford's pretty typical touchscreen system. Um, I've used it in a couple of their other products and I like it a lot. I think it's very easy to use. It's very straightforward. And that's really what I look for in modern SUVs or, or modern infotainment systems in general. They should be very easy to use. I should let my grandparents get into this car and they should be able to change settings in the center screen super super easy and I have very very strong confidence that they would be able to do that I think it's very intuitive I think it's very user friendly and I like that a lot couple things in the infotainment system I can do onboard Wi-Fi if that's something I would like to do I can enable mobile apps uh, general settings there's nothing really too crazy in here I do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if that's something that you seek out I think pretty much all new cars have that now but Again, very nice to see that in the Bronco Sport. So for the backup camera in the Bronco Sport, I like this view. I also like the fact that when you turn the wheel, it does adjust accordingly, but also still gives these straight on distances, if you could see that. Another thing is hit the plus sign, we get a nice zoomed in view. This is great if you're going to trail or something, or if you're backing up to something very, very close, you have this nice zoom in as well as we get the Bronco Sport from up above and our parking sensors are just sort of overlaid on the normal system. Honda like pushes everything over to make room for that. This just overlays it really, really nice. And down below that, I have very minimalist radio controls, skip track, volume, tune, my automatic start stop on and off and my hazard switch all down below here. I really, really like the look of it. Like I said, I love the minimalist sort of aspect of it. I think it's really, really good looking. Down below the radio controls, I do have a little shelf. This I really, really like because it's perfect for putting your phone, although I'll explain in a second why I would not put my phone there. But it's great for little things. There's this little padded texture surface inside of it. It's not gonna slide things around or anything like that. And that's super useful. I think a lot of modern cars are starting to put storage in their vehicles in very intuitive ways, and this is just another example of that. Below that shelf is the climate controls. Like I said earlier, this is where I'll find my heated steering wheel, as well as, of course, heated seats, three different levels of that, my fan controls, dual zone climate, which I really like. It gets these little digital readouts for the temperature. I think this looks very modern, and I really like just the overall functionality of it, very easy to use, and it has Ford's classic little stick man, I call him. It shows you where the temperature is going, although it's separated across multiple buttons. I think it's so funny that they do this. They've done this for years and years now, um, at least since 2013, if I could remember that far. And I just enjoy m seeing my little stick man and all the little Ford products I drive. Then down below the climate controls, I have another little cubby and this has a wireless charger integrated into it. I love this and that's why I said I wouldn't put my phone on the shelf because I'll just put it down below and automatically charge it wirelessly. I absolutely love that. To the right of the wireless charger, I have another little non-skid pad and then I have two USBs in, a USB-C and a traditional USB and then a 12 volt outlet. Very, very smart here and very, very good looking. 
The center console itself has the shifter, which is a rotary dial shifter, which I don't mind. I think it looks good. I think it functions well. And that's all I can ask for from a shifter. You know, I'm not taking the shifter to prom. I'm just trying to get to work. So it doesn't really matter. Down below that, I do have my power parking brake and my auto holding brake. This is great. I personally believe all new cars should have this feature, but you'd be surprised some still don't. For instance, the more expensive Kia Sorento at the base model does not have auto holding brakes. Then down at the bottom, we have our GOAT modes. Now, this is more funny in name than functionality because these are your drive modes. So I have a couple we can choose from. I have sand, normal, eco, sport, and slippery. Now, I mentioned this in my 2020 Ford Explorer review because it actually uses the same animation switching between the modes. I love this. I really, really love this. These animations are something super special. Someone at Ford took a lot of time and effort to actually animate these and I, I want to shake their hand. I, I want to say thank you because this is just, to me, it makes me feel special. It makes me feel like a special boy when I'm switching between modes. And when I switch to sport, there's this red explosion like, yeah, we're, go we're doing sporty things. Now, one thing that the Ford Explorer was missing is sand mode. So this is actually a new mode for the Bronco. And I like that it gives you what looks like the Grand Canyon or something in the background. Looks very nice. And of course, I'm not using it here in suburbia, but I like that I have that option. I wish that the Bronco Sport would have had a dedicated four-wheel drive switch like other traditional off-roaders, but I get that this is a more toned down off-roader, so I'm fine with that. Now, the seats are nice and comfortable. They are made of a couple different materials. I love the look of them. They sort of remind me almost of like a country western shop or something like that. You know, I love this leather and the stitching and the, the Bronco that's embossed into it. I think it all looks really, really good. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. Couple things to note back here. First of all, headroom, great. I can almost fit, I can fit two fists sideways above my head. I'm 5'11", great. Knee room, great. Like I'll talk about later, I think this is the perfect size for an SUV, a two row SUV, I think this is perfect. In the center console here, I have two cup holders that fold out very nice. The multiple materials from the front carry on back here, and I love that. And the coolest part is down below here, I actually have a wall outlet. 110 volt, 150 watt outlet, I think is absolutely cool. One of the coolest things, one of the best things you can have in a car like this is an outlet back here. I could plug in whatever the heck I want back here. I could plug in a toaster if I want. I do not recommend that. I, I want that to be clear. I do not recommend plugging in a toaster or George Foreman grill. However, you could. I'm just saying you could. I'm not saying you should. I'm saying you could. Letters matter in that argument. But overall, I'm really, really impressed with this backseat area. Mainly just the headroom and knee room. Again, for a two row SUV, really, really great. Now we'll take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks and then my final thoughts on the Bronco Sport. All right, so we're on the back of the Bronco Sport. And the nice thing is that I actually have, I don't know if it's gonna come across on camera all too well, but I have door and glass. So when I hit that, I can just raise the glass. I really love this feature. I think it's really smart and not a whole lot of SUVs have this feature. And so I can access anything. If you have a pet back here, they're not gonna jump out or, or anything like that, or a camera car. This would make a great camera car because you could just open the glass like this, shoot out the back. Really, really cool. Also, wait, I just noticed, hold on. Look, there's a little Bronco on the bottom. That's fun. All right, now, you know, I thought this Bronco was black. I'm starting to see a little bit of a little bit of root beer there. Now we're actually in the back. I have a light switch, cargo light over here, some tie downs. I love this attention to detail on the light itself. It's just a little Bronco. Does that matter? Does that make me buy the car? No, but that's really cool and just nice that they give you that. Up here, 12 volt outlet. You guys know that this is super important to me that new vehicles have 12 volt outlets in the back, especially hatchbacks. And of course, my Bronco Sport floor mats and I get this nice rubberized flooring that comes up, full spare tire, which is very, very nice. And that's about it. Oh, actually one more thing, these seats do go down. So hit a button there, the seats go down. So the second row 
can completely fold flat. Very, very nice. And again, very, very useful back here. I think this is a really well-designed cargo area. Just overall well-designed SUV. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I love the look of the Bronco Sport. I think it's fresh, I think it's modern, I think it's unique. Um, definitely, while I've been driving, I've been noticing a couple heads turning. Um, that could be because people just haven't seen the Bronco yet. Um, but also, it's, it's an attractive SUV. I think they really nailed it with the styling, and I'm pretty happy with that. So, now that I've driven the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport, what are my final thoughts on it? Well, I really think that this is a very, very good SUV. Very, very good. I think it's very modern. I think it's very fresh. I think it's different. And honestly, I love all the features in here. You know, I drove a base model Ford Explorer not too long ago, and I wasn't too happy with it because I thought it felt kind of cheap. This does not feel cheap. This feels a lot, lot nicer than a base model Explorer. The materials in here are great. They're all very, very well designed. There's this sort of like almost rubberization on the dash. These seats, I think, look great. They're heated. They're keeping me warm. It's nice and comfortable. I sat down in this seat and I didn't think that it was too hard or not good enough. I, I think this is a fantastic seat. I think from where I'm driving, this is great. And I honestly think that the Bronco Sport is almost the perfect size for me for an SUV. It doesn't have a third row, so it's not huge. I don't feel like I'm a menace to society when I pull into a parking lot. It's not overly large. However, it's big enough where it's obvious that I'm in an SUV and I get SUV features like that. And so what I really love about the Bronco Sport besides, like I said, the size and the features is the fact that this is a truly exciting and fresh vehicle on the road. I've driven a lot of vehicles in the past that I was impressed by. Uh, the Kia Sorento Prestige is a great SUV. And so is the Rogue Platinum. Both of those were redesigned for 2021. But the Bronco Sport wasn't redesigned for 2021. It's brand new for 2021. There is no 2020 Bronco. There is no 2019 Bronco. There is no 2018 Bronco. There, there hasn't been a Bronco for a very long time. And so this is a truly new, truly fresh, truly interesting SUV. So much so that the Bronco Sport was announced in July of 2020. They had a live stream event and I took this picture. I was in Door County, Wisconsin. I took this picture out on a golf course, which is where I was when the Bronco was announced. And I took that picture because I knew that it would be one of those moments where someone will ask me, where were you when they announced the Ford Bronco Sport? And so I could tell people, but as you guys know, I make videos I prefer showing. So this is exactly where I was when I found out about this SUV. And now I'm driving it only a couple months later. And honestly, it exceeded my expectations. I really thought that this was going to be a Ford Escape with a body kit, but it's not. It drives differently. It feels different. It, it, it's almost hard to describe how this feels. I've been driving this car for 30, 40 minutes now, and I, I feel like I own it. Now, if you're watching this at Packy Web Ford, don't worry, I'm not stealing your car. <laughs> But what I mean by that is I feel very at home. I feel very comfortable in this car right off the bat. That's very rare for me to really truly feel comfortable in a vehicle right away. It happened with the E46 BMW M3. I felt right at home in an E46 M3. It happened when I first drove my Mazda RX-7, my 85. I felt right at home as soon as I drove it. And of course I owned that car for four years until the rust took over. And so that's my biggest takeaway from this is that I feel comfortable, I feel welcomed, I feel at home in this vehicle. It's something so new, and yet it embraces everything that's old and everything that's comfortable. Anamoya is a term of false nostalgia, nostalgia of something that doesn't exist, and I, I get Anamoya with this Bronco Sport. I've never driven one before today, and they haven't even been on lots for more than a week. However, I feel like I've driven this car all my life, and that, that's what's missing from the Nissan Rogue. That's what's missing from the Toyota RAV4. That's what's missing from the Honda Passport. I feel right at home. I feel comfortable. And man, do I not want to give this back to the dealership. But speaking of which, huge thank you to Packy Web Ford in Downers Grove. Thank you, Spencer and Matt, who both helped get me into the seat of the Bronco Sport. I'm super excited 
to be making a video with Packy Web Ford. This is the first day I've worked with them. I haven't even visited the dealer before today. I walked in and three different people tried to help me immediately all super friendly. They knew what I was doing when I said, hey, I'm the video guy. And they said, oh yes, 100%, sure. Like, you know, let's let's get you into that Bronco sport as quick as possible. Let's answer your questions. And so honestly, Packy Web has made me feel at home as well. And I really, really appreciate that out of a dealership. Down in the description below is Spencer's information. Spencer is one of their salesmen and he's a friend of mine and we're going to be working together on a couple more videos. So please go give him your business. If you're looking at a Bronco Sport, if you're looking at an F-150 or an EcoSport or a Ranger or any Ford product or any used vehicle on Packy Web's lot, please reach out to Spencer. Like I said, his information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. Please go give him your business. He's an absolutely great guy and he made this review possible. And that, that is awesome. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.